Hi everyone, I am so excited because I'm speaking with author Amy and Pelizzeri and we are talking this book, Why We Lie. I love this cover, Amy. Thank you. I love, I mean, I don't know people, that's why I want to like point it out because I had to really look at it. I'm like, what yeah. is this? And then I'm like, oh, yeah. it's the Washington Monument. It's cherry blossoms. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the I whole the Washington D.C. feel, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did not have a vision for this cover. I didn't know what really what what it was going to look like. Um, and my publisher sent me a few different concepts. And when that one came, I was like, "Oh yes, that's it. That's oh. it." So yeah. Oh yeah, and it, it's just beautiful. Like before you even notice it, you're like, "It's so beautiful." And then you're like, "Wait, what is yeah. that?" Yeah, <laughs> it's like a little twisted. And beautiful at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And I know we talked about it the last time because I spent a lot of years in D.C. I worked for a large law firm in D.C. And yeah. I was just there recently. Where are you? I swear. I, I never, I don't know about you, but like as soon as I get in there, like get in, I'm like, oh. Yeah. It never gets old. DC no. never gets old to me. No, I love it. It's one of my favorite places for sure. Yeah. I mean, every day when I go to work, I just smile. Like I'm like, oh. yeah. You know? Yeah. You feel like you're in the middle of things. You feel like things are happening. Yeah, you really do. Yeah. I don't know. There's something magical for me. It's like there's yeah. something magical about being right there, you know? Yeah. In the middle of the everything, you know? Yeah. You feel like you're in the know, even though I don't know that you're more in the know. But you do feel <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. I, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So I went up to the Capitol. I did the whole, you know, touristy mm -hmm. thing all over yeah. again. So anyway, yeah. it was so much fun. So reading this, like being in the middle, I mean, it's like a dream for me, you know, Yeah. being right there. You feel like, I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm right in the midst, but I finished this last night. And oh. so going to sleep, I'm like, did I ever lie on a resume? <laughs> 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 I mean, you had me asking myself so like, hmm, what is a lie? What is really yeah. a lie? You know, yeah. is that like how you wanted? I mean, you really wanted to put that out there that like what we call lies, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we all lie. Everyone lies. So I really believe that. And um, so I would say, you know, everyone lies, but the real surprise is why. Um, so you know, it's just th this book is uh, is I think you know, meant to sort of have everyone kind of examine a little bit about what our real truth is and um, what we hold out to the world as our truth, what our inner truth is, but um, really kind of examine that. Yeah. And I was thinking like, you know, as a child, like there were things I remember being told, like what happens in this house stays in this house. <laughs> so then when you go outside, you're like, okay, did anything happen? Like, I don't even remember if anything, you know, like sometimes right, it was right. like, did anything happen? Am I like, you know, cause I would get in trouble cause I talk, yeah. I'm a talker and I yeah. just spurt out. Not that I don't lie. Cause I, like you said, I think everybody lies, but I'm yeah. also one of those people that just blurts out like right. truths that people don't want either. <laughs> Which is sometimes, as we find out, truths are tough too, right? They are. They are. Well, that's what this book is about. It's about too. Is it? Um, is it always better to tell the truth? Because that's sort of right. Everyone sort of has that mantra in the back of their head: be honest at all times, be truthful. Um, is it always better to tell the truth? Um, is there ever? Is it ever okay to lie? I don't know. Right. Okay. So we start with the prologue. Is the op-ed, which I loved your op-ed in the, you know, that were scared. Yeah. And Nate, I can't even say this, Esuzair. 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 All right. And we start in 2014 and, you know, it's like this truth seeker, right? Yeah. We yeah. Start with the truth seeker. Yeah. The, the chronology of the book, um, jumps around a little bit. And so the op-ed pieces as they are laid out in the book end to end are meant to sort of ground the chronology. So um, it starts in 2014, but then ends in present time. So that we're sort of, as the reader is sort of going back and forth, they sort of have this, this, this line that they can follow. Yeah, I love that about it. I loved how it jumped. Thank you. You know, I don't always love it, but I did. Yeah. I loved, I loved her story. And okay, so it starts off there, and then the end of the first, I'm going to read it from the book. I thought I wrote it down, but I can just go to the book. I love how you end the first chapter. Um, in the future, there will be a time when I will no longer be afraid to tell the truth. But even as the thought forming in her brain, Chelsea suspected she'd have to tell a great many more lies to get to that point. 
Yeah. That yeah. Was, I was like, you had me right there. I'm like, oh my God, Amy, <laughs> that is so good. Like, I can't wait to see what this is about. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Oh, I, so, you know, I carried it around cause I had the book like all day yesterday and I was like cheering you on as I'm reading. I'm like, Oh my God, that was so good. Oh my gosh. This is so oh, good. So I'm like going to let you set it up because I don't even know what to say. <laughs> yeah. I know this is a hard book, right? Yeah. It's a hard book to talk about without giving spoilers. Right. Um, so, you know, basically the book, um, uh, the book opens with a rising star politician, Jude Birch who um, has recently been elected to a completely fictional office in D.C. Um, so he's a fictional politician, fictional office. I had to do it that way. And <laughs> he has, um, he, this is how the book opens. So this isn't giving anything away. He's been shot. Right. And he, um, his wife, Abby, has just learned that uh, he has lost his ability to lie. His brain is overcompensating for itself. And it's the way it's healing is that um, he has lost his his filter, and he's no longer able to lie. And so she is really horrified by this news because um, she, we don't know why, but we know that it's a really big deal to her that he's not going to be able to lie. And so that's how the book opens. And then um, we sort of retrace her story and her backstory and how they got to this point of um, the campaign and and the place the place where they are now, which is him having won this election. Um, and so really we kind of then back up and follow them through the campaign. And then also her, her backstory and of course his backstory, which really doesn't evolve until later in the story. But right. she's um, she obviously has a secret and obviously has a secret past that the reader isn't really privy to, but is sort of starting to unravel as the story goes on. Um, but also, she's very tentative about his campaign manager and his past. She, um, he has this, this female campaign manager, Layla Rogers. Um, Abby can't figure out if they are former lovers, if they were just law school friends, as Jude has told her. Um, but there's clearly a relationship between them, and there's something going on between them that makes Abby uncomfortable. And, um, as her story unravels, so does that of Layla Rogers. So I swear that's what had me turning those pages so fast was I was like, okay, what is Abby's secret? Okay. Who yeah. is Layla? Like, I'm like, and don't yeah. look, you know, I kept like forcing myself. Don't look, don't look, don't look. At <laughs> like, yeah. 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 That's good. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Because it's a story that needs to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As much as when I read books like this is like that, I want to go to the end. I want to go on the ride. You know, it's that conflict. Yeah. It's like, no, I want the ride. I want the ride that you're going to take me on to get me. Like, it's not going to be satisfying if I just find out. Like, I want to go on the good, ride good, to good. find out, you know? That's what I like to hear. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's why I said you set it up so well that it was like, no, I want to be on that ride. Like, I don't want to turn to the last page and just be like, oh. Right. Know. Now, right. I, you know, now I found out. I want to read. Well, for sure, it. this was the... Um, this was the most complicated book I've written. Oh and gosh. for sure the plot was challenging for me um, to keep everything so that when the final reveal came, everything would make, would make sense and that the ride would feel satisfying. Um, so thank you for saying that because it's, it is definitely the most um, complicated, ambitious plot I took on. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. I was thinking that like, as I'm reading, I'm like, wow, the, her notes must have been crazy <laughs> to keep all this straight. <laughs> Sometimes I find I sometimes I find old notes from along the way because I, I do scribble things sometimes when things come to me. So most most everything is on various versions of my hard drive, but sometimes I'll find scribbled notes and I'll just laugh because um, you know the the way some of these twists and connections come to me is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what keeps us reading, so I'm really happy about that. But so you're out on book tour coming up in March, and um, and I'm gonna get to see you. I can't yes, wait. I can't wait. That's awesome. Yeah. I know. I even know where the Mosellum Springs is. I know where that is too. But yes, that's a yes, yes. Bit further away. But yeah, um, oh, I love them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so pretty there. It's, it's so pretty. pretty. Yeah. Yeah, I love it out there. But um, are you writing while you're out on tour? Yeah, <laughs> you're already shaking. Yeah, your <laughs> I am. Um, so I have um, I have a second book. So Why We Lie was part of a cheap book deal. Totally unrelated books. Um. And so I have been working. So the funny thing is, I actually, I've been working on Why, Why We Lie probably took about two, two years to write. I was working on Why We Lie alongside a second book. 
And I was working on them both at the same time, and I wasn't 100% sure which book was going to go first. I really wanted both of them, but I wasn't sure which was going to go first. And eventually, Why We Lie rose to the rose to the top of the <laughs> of the manuscript pile, and um, and and then I finished that. And so when we did the deal for Why We Lie, um, we also did it for this, the second book. Um, so I don't want to say too much about that book because there's a, there's a bit of a surprise with that book, okay. and we're going to announce it. Um, uh, hopefully later this spring or early this summer. Um, but basically, I'll just say this, that um, readers who have been with me since Lemongrass Hope, I think, are going to be very excited about this next book. So <laughs> we, um, so I am still working uh, uh, on that book. I'm still editing and working on that book. So yes, I'm still writing and working. <laughs> so, but do you think it's going to be out this year or you think it's for no, next spring? No, it'll be out next spring. Oh, okay. It'll be out next spring, yeah. Uh, I was like hoping, but. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to let, let Why We Lie have its, have its day. And um, yeah, so the next book is due out in the spring of 2020. So when you sign, just a random question, when you sign a two book deal, like, is it after, like, what do you do then? Like, do they re-sign or do they, like, do you renegotiate or? No. So if you do the two book deal, you've negotiated those two books at that time. Um, and um, in my case, because the second book wasn't completed, you know, the publisher still obviously um, needs to see that book. Uh, but it's, everything is all negotiated part of that initial package. Yeah. Right. And then I'm always like, and then what? Like they can pick you up for another two books or you get yeah. to go out and just they, do whatever. Like, they can do whatever. Or they can say goodbye or they can say what do you have or next. you can or, say yeah. goodbye. Yeah, but I'll at least be with Wyatt McKenzie through next spring, so that's that's oh, for sure. That's <laughs> awesome. I I'm so happy for you because you're like one of my favorite writers. Like, oh, thank all you. Your books. I loved uh, the the all about Thea. The truth about Thea. The truth about Thea. Yeah. Yeah. I always say all about it is the truth. That's about okay. Thea. I can picture. Sorry, the I, call, I'm like picturing I call it Thea. Cover. I call her Thea a lot. Thea, so. exactly. It's like the Thea book, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Thea means truth, so it's that's, that's what it is. That's right. And you know, yeah. that cover is just like I said. You say that, and I can pick up the cover. Like out of all the covers I see in my life, yes. I see Thea book, and I'm like, I see the cover. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah, I love that cover. I love that woman in that cover. That was another one when I really did not know what that, that cover was going to look like because that's another twisty, crazy book. Yeah. And my publisher, um, I, I mean, she's the one that did all my covers, and I credit her with all, with some real genius there. And she sent me that cover, and then she also sent me a lot of other photographs of women and uh -huh. said, you know, if you like other – I've gone through this, and I really think this is Thea, but if you like someone better, tell me. And um, – went through all the other photos of all the other women and I was like, nope, this is Thea. So yeah. Yeah. And you know that you've done well if I can, if people can recall covers. Yeah, those, that's you know? true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a great thing. I can even picture the others too, which is crazy. Like, I yeah, that's you know. awesome. <laughs> but anyway, here is this cover, which I'm just, I just love this cover. So I do too. Much. I do I too. Wait yeah. To I was excited about it. writing a book about DC. That's where my legal career started. And, um, I, you know, it's funny after, so this, this year will mark 10 years since I left my law career and yeah. I, my first two books, you know, were not legal books, were not legal thrillers. And I would go to book clubs and people would say, well, you're a former lawyer. Why don't you write legal fiction? Right. And I would always say, you know, I really, I practiced corporate law. It was very unsexy, not the stuff <laughs> of novels, not at all. Um, but then I got this idea for the truth about Thea, which was based on my legal practice, but I set the case in a criminal trial, which is much more exciting. And which I was not a criminal lawyer, but I set the case that way. And then um, this book, you know, is a political thriller. It, it delves into the political legal world in DC. Um, so it's very full circle for me because it's been a decade out of the law, circling back to where I started in the law um, many years ago. So um, yeah, so it's been a really fun kind of full circle moment. Yeah. What, what years did you clerk? So I clerked, I graduated from George Washington in 95, and I clerked from 95 to 97. Wow, we just crossed paths. Oh. Because I was there 89 to 94. Oh, wow. So yeah. that's crazy. Because we had clerks all the time, you know, interning in our firm. And I was like, maybe we cross paths somewhere. But very, yeah. very close. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So everyone, this, and you know what? It's a quick read, which I love. I mean, it's under 300 pages. It is. I, I know, love for, that. For being my most ambitious plot, I think it's my shortest book. And um, because it just 
made it really tight. Everything yes. has to be really tight. And I love that. I really do. Yeah, I like thank thriller you. books. I love when they're really tight, not wasted. Any, you know, and I was like, I get happy about it. You know, because you get lost. If you, if you know you're, you're, you're yes. driving towards a finish line and then now the author's taking on a separate ride, you get, I get lost. So yes. I like, I like really taught, um, thriller psychological suspense so this i was very happy with way this yeah i out. always say that i'm like psychological thrillers I, and thrillers i want them under 300 like yeah i yeah, figure I if they're over right. if you can't wrap that up quicker than that i'm i'm off too far like I'm yeah off. <laughs> yeah because if you have to keep putting it down and coming back to it you're gonna get lost yes exactly so yeah everybody this comes out on tuesday i don't know if i said that before so i want to make sure that you know this comes out you can pre-order it now i'm sure everywhere but i will okay. pass, i will put um also the indie bound link I've yes. been doing that lately because I really want to support the indie Absolutely. bookstores. Where um, and for anybody who doesn't know what that is, is you put the book in, it tells you where you can go get it, where they yes. have it that's near you. I love that, love yes. it because I love my indie bookstores. So I do too. I but, do too. Big shout out to Firefly Bookstore yes. in Cooktown, which is my indie bookstore, and that's where we're gonna meet up on March 10th for a book launch party. So yes. yeah, yeah. There's one really close to here too in Emmaus that's very cute. Oh, and what's the name of it? I know now, like, I wish I'll, I could look it I'll up. Oh, I'll look it up. That's great to know. Yeah, yeah it's in Delhi. Because I grew up in the Lehigh Valley, and I didn't know of any indie bookstores in the Lehigh Valley. Where did you grow up? I, in Allentown. I grew up in Emmaus. I, went, I graduated from Emmaus. Where did you graduate from? Allentown, Central Catholic. You did, oh, that's so yeah. crazy. I didn't I know. actually grew up in this area. That's crazy. I know. We, we just, we just, just have keep, we kept we that. Just, we just <laughs> keep house. Yeah, I know. That's crazy, but yeah, there is a small bookstore in Emmaus that I love and I go to. I've done interviews there. Oh, it's, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'll definitely look them up. Yeah, it's crazy. So anyway, but I will put the Amazon link in for all you guys who are just going to like hit that Kindle button. I mean, that's fun too. So yeah, yeah, and I will say if you if you pre-order the Kindle version, um, Kindle is actually making it available. Monday, a day early. So if you pre-order, you get the Kindle version a day early. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to next week because you're going to be all over the place and I'll, yeah. I'll be following you everywhere. So thank you. <laughs> thank all you over so social much. Media, all over social. I'll be all, all over there. So um, I look forward to seeing you. And, thank uh, you. I look forward to seeing you too. Thanks have so a great much. week next week. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. See you soon. See you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.